Hi! Welcome to the third and final video and today we're going to show you how to applique your motif down to the background. Whether it's your whale that you're working on or your elephant, I'm going to show you my favorite tips for machine applique. Hi, my name is Jennifer Sampu. Welcome to the third video of Elephant and I. And today we are tackling machine applique. And there's lots of things that I'd love to teach you about the types of applique products you can use and the types of thread. And then one of my favorite things is using the washable applique, not as it's supposed to be used, but as a back stabilizer. And I'll get into that in more detail. But what we'll be doing is learning to put, whether you're working on the elephant or you're working on the whale, of how to get a nice, clean, smooth, professional looking machine applique. So let's look at what I have for supplies. I brought lots of supplies when it comes to a double-sided adhesive, and that's what you use to make the elephant or the whale stick to the fabric um, that is the background, whether it's the sea or a striped background. But what we have here is you can use, if you have Misty Fuse, you can use that. And this is Misty Fuse, very lightweight, and it's double-sided. This can use uh, to adhere the elephant to the background. We've got the Quilters Select Alex Anderson Appliweb. This has a little bit more of a pliable feel to it. That works as a double stick. If you have steam -a seam I just have a little sample here. The steam -a seam Light, I like this product very much. If you have the Pellon Wonder Under, that will work too. And one of my, this is like actually one of my favorites because it's just really quick. If it's a nice day outside, I will use the 505 Spray and Fix. And I'll just spray the back of my applique piece and then stick it to the backing fabric. Moving on, um, you want to have your rotary cutter if you're using any of these types of fusibles. Scissors, small scissors, paper cutter scissors. Oh, the tail. This is really... Now the whale doesn't have a tail, at least not this kind of tail. This is the elephant tail. So there's the elephant tail and I'll show you how to make that with twine. And then I just brought a couple of my Aurifil threads and wool compare these colors to the elephant project and we'll pick our favorite. The wash away applique sheet. It comes in a roll which is 14 inches wide by 10 yards. This is what I really like. If you have 8.5 by 11 sheet you can use this. And the, the cool thing about the washable applique is it has one side that is fusible. And I'll show you how I use this. And this is what gives me that really clean, professional applique look. So I was looking at my baseball cap. I had this baseball cap. I got a lot of baseball caps. And a lot of them have logos on the front. And when I look on the inside of my baseball cap, there is um, always like this kind of stabilizer. And the exterior of the baseball cap is really clean. It's professionally done. It's a commercial hat. So I was trying to achieve that same look. And I'll show you in detail, but I've gotten better over the years. This is more of my latest quilt. And this whale is pretty much perfect. How I have to say, I have to say it's really good of how I applicate it on. It's really clean, beautiful Bernina stitch. And this is one of my older quilts. And it's also good. It's not as clean. And it's a little bit lumpy. It's good. It's definitely passable, but it's not as professional looking as this one. And that's because I used the applique, the wash away applique sheet behind it. So I'll get into more detail when we get onto my sewing machine and I show you that. Make sure you also have your, um, your ironing sheet that uh, you don't get any of the sticky stuff onto your iron. So here we have the elephant and I flipped it over to the front side so the raw side is facing up. You want to make sure that all of your seams where you put together the units are pressed open. So double press those. You want it to be as clean as possible. 
and I'm clipping this extra Ooh, these are really paper scissors <laughs> okay so these are definitely paper scissors which is great they're cutting the steam a seam oh thank you thank you magical person so you want to you know trim off any extra fabric that you don't need and trim off like any extra little bits of thread just clean it up okay and so what I did with the steam seam I already cut it with my paper scissors and the steam seam has um, a paper that you peel off and then is revealed is that sticky side and what I like to do is I like to put a bond right to the edge of the elephant because then I go back and I trim the elephant very very slightly but what this does is it gives me a super clean edge and nothing is fraying so I've already pre-cut these and they're what about two inches by maybe a half inch I don't really want to put steam -a seam on the entire back of the elephant if you're using a different product like Misty Fuse or the Apple Web, it's okay if you put the whole product on the entire elephant. There's so many ways to do it. You know, it's up to you, but this is how I'm doing it. So I'm going to actually have a smaller piece. Let me hold that one for later. Here's a smaller piece. So it peels it right off. And I'm only going over the edge, maybe a quarter of an inch at the most. It's okay if you overlap them a little bit, although you will have to peel it. So actually, take that back. You don't want to overlap it. Go back behind his rump. Nice big piece there. And so you're going to want to do this all around the exterior of the elephant. And I will fill up my pressing pad here. And then I'll move my elephant along, but first let me press this. I'll do his belly down here too. Little belly belly. I'm actually going to cut that. Right there. Let's put this, mm, let's put this maybe along the neck. Okay. And then I'm going to get some more steam seam but let me just show you how I'm going to press this. Then you put your silicone paper on top because you don't want to get your iron gunky. And I press for a few seconds, moving it along. You want that adhesive to melt. And the Steam Seam is a great product. There's lots of great products. Use what you like, or maybe even what you have. The silicon sheet is um, a product from CNT Publishing. And it's nice to have because it's okay if it gets sticky. It's reusable, but it also um, comes in a package where you get more than one sheet. And you want to let you want to let your product cool after as well. Okay. So when you do it, when you when you iron to this um, this ironing sheet, it's nice because you can pick it up. And then you go and do the entire elephant, which I'll do later, but I just want to show you how I do this, because you'd go all around the perimeter of the elephant. I'm going to trim along the edge, and I'm ever so slightly taking just the hairs of the threads off the edge of the elephant. The reason I like the steam seam 
is that see how clean that edge becomes and when you have the edge bonded with the product you don't have to worry about any fraying see just a little itty itty bit that's coming off so just go all the way around the elephant So now that you've finished all your trimming, you flip it over and then you peel away the layer. And this is where I'll use my Alex tool because you want to catch catch the edge. Okay. Sometimes it's hard to find the edge. There it is. So if you don't, if you're not finding the edge, you can press it again or just go from a different corner. So remember that you want to continue the steam a seam along all the edges of the elephant. And here I would do entire steam a seam, both sides. And you want to steam a seam here along the foot, the entire perimeter of the elephant, so that's all sticky. Okay, and then you're ready to put it on the background fabric. So now we're going to talk about placement of the elephant and the girl. So I've got it all ready with the adhesive and um, you want to make sure that you're placing the elephant on the background. There's no perfect magic answer, but you want to place it so that, so, so here you have your elephant and you position it to where it's fairly level, like unless you want the elephant walking up a hill or down a hill, but I kind of like my elephant walking level and I place the girl right on top of this little seam and I like covering that seam. I like the relationship. You know, you kind of finagle it a little bit and you get her fingertip almost touching the trunk of the elephant and her foot is right here. The, um, the steam -a seam has a bit of stickiness to it. If you're using the spray 505, that has stickiness, whatever product you're using. Some will have stickiness, some won't, but I have a little bit of stickiness with the steam -a seam So you press it down with your hand. I like that. There's no other adjustments I need to make. It's a nice clean edge. And then I take my pressing sheet and I'm going to press these down. So then press that. Remember to go along the edge because that's where you put your steam -a seam And the edge is what we're going to be applicating. So the edge you want to be really bonded with the background fabric. So that when you go to machine applique, you're not having anything flap around. You know, some people make their own ironing boards at home. They cover a piece of board with some batting and then some like ironing board cover. It's nice because this is fairly big piece and um, sometimes doesn't fit all in a traditional ironing board. So let me see. I want to test your edges a little bit. Oh, see there was some gooey stuff from the other side of my pressing sheet, so I want to get rid of that. Sorry, is my head getting in the Oh, and look at that. There's a little thing I want to fix. A little bit of a overlap. So I want that nice clean edge. 
So fix anything that you see that needs fixing. If you see a straight thread, fix it. So the next step I'm going to show you is how I'm using my wash away applique sheet. I'm using it as a stabilizer and I'm not using it the way it's traditionally used when you go look at some of the YouTube videos. I'm using it on the back side of the quilt. So I've got the sheets, which I'm going to use one eight and a half by 11 sheet cut down for behind the girl here. And I get my scissors. I'm always losing my scissors. Do you lose your scissors? <laughs> Where are my scissors? Here's my scissors. Yes, we're always losing our scissors, even on filming day. So I'm going to cut this out to be the size of the girl. I'm not going to cut it really any bigger than I need. So I just eyeballed it, right? And so this. I'm going to stick onto the back and you can see through, like I can see through my fabric so that the wash away applique is on the entire back side of the girl and you want it at medium temperature. You don't want to press it super hot because we're going to be pulling the product off. The product is being used just as a stabilizer so don't press it too hot. The elephant, I get to use my nice big roll, and this is perfect. So I'm going to get the size of the elephant, and then I'm going to get my scissors again, which are right here, didn't lose them, and I'm going to cut the length of the elephant. Okay, and then I'm going to, now I do have just a little bit of that ear exposed. So I'm going to slip this underneath. And I've pressed my seams already in the back. So I can fold it back here. See how this is on the back side right here? So we're just prepping it. Scooch this down a bit. Scooch this down. And you want to make sure that you're putting the bumpy side or the shiny side up to the fabric because that's what, where the sticky stuff is. This smoother side that feels more like cloth, there's no sticky stickiness to here. And then I'm going to take this extra piece that was left over from my 8.5 by 11 and I'm going to put it underneath the ear. I'm going to butt it right there. And remember, medium iron, not too hot. Just press it down. And it's okay. You don't really want to press the entire sheet on. We're using it as a stabilizer. So you really want to be pressing it where we're going to be sewing. Sometimes I'll put like a little secure pin. Just to, or you know, like a, a quilting, a quilting pin. To keep it in place. I know one time with a whale, I just did strips of strips of the um, the eight and a half by eleven because I didn't have the roll in my studio. So press it down. And at this point, you don't want to be doing this with your iron because you don't want to be creating little furry furry threads to be you know pushed up or pulled away from the fabric. Okay, and then I just want to make sure that it's sticking to the back. So yeah, so see, it's sticking to the back. And did I get the ear? Oh, I got to do a little bit more on the ear. Okay. We are almost, well no, now we're ready to, now we're ready to choose a thread and go to the machine and do our applique. So the colors of thread, Aurifil's my favorite, um, and I just pulled a couple of options. There's a variegated thread, I actually like that a lot. There's the hot pink, here's like a sky blue, which would be like the color of the background, 
and here's a stronger blue. So I think for today, I think I'm going to choose, I like the sky blue because I want it to be quiet. So I'm going to choose the sky blue. Choose whatever color you want, whatever you like, and make sure you practice your zigzag stitch and practice your, your stitch length and your stitch width before you commit on your final piece. So now we're ready to go to the machine. So here we are at the machine and we're beginning our applique, machine applique, and I've got the washable applique on the back of this whole unit. My stitch width is at um, 3.0 and my stitch length is at 0.35. This gives me a nice crisp satin stitch that I love. And remember I use the blue because I really want the applique work to just fade away but when you look close you say oh that's beautiful that's a beautiful satin stitch. So that's kind of why I chose the color I did and the stitch width. And I made a sample before, which I'll show you. I forgot to show you that. And you just take your time. I started on the back leg because if I did have a problem, it wouldn't be as noticeable. And I go a little bit and then I stop. And I put my needle down and I check my work. And that looks pretty good. And I keep going. And depending on the machine you have, you get slightly different results. You want to make sure the right hand side of the needle is always catching the fabric. If you go to a point where it's it's not catching the out the outside edge of the elephant, just reposition it. And then when I get to a corner, I stop and I put my needle on the outside edge when I'm at a corner like this. And then I lift up my presser foot and make a slight change. This is where his tail's going to be. And, what, and then I lift it up again. But what the um, wash away applique is doing is it's giving me such a nice, stable kind of structure to my sewing. tight curve and I slow down and I as I'm slowing down and turning I'm also turning my whole piece and I slow down that's how you get a nice inside curve and you turn and then you can speed up when you're on the straightaway it's just like driving I slow down on the curves I like keeping my needle on down as well. So if you've got that option on your machine, it's nice when you finish to have that down position right there. And then when I got to the tip of the trunk, I lifted my needle, it was on the outside, 
and glazed it. Okay, and now we're ending. We've gone around the entire elephant. And we're ending it. Just doing a tad of an overlap. And yay! There we go. So that's the elephant. Little fuzzies. Looks good. Looks beautiful. Now I'm gonna do the girl. Might as well get her done. So with the girl, I am going to do the same stitch width. Uh, you know what? I'm actually gonna reduce the width a little bit more. Let's go to a 2.5. Because she's just more delicate, I'm going to keep the same stitch length. done. Yay. Okay. Well, that looks good. 
that's nice. Make sure you do some tests where you're checking the stitch width and the stitch length and write them down next to your test so that you know when you start your project you are getting what you want. Okay, now that we're all finished, yay, with the satin stitching, we take off the, the back, the stabilizer, and it's just going to basically pop off because the satin stitching is so tight. Just peel this off. And remember, this is the wash away applique that's also used as a great stabilizer. And it doesn't stick that much. Remember I told you not to use too hot of an iron? You don't want to bake it on. You don't want to go with a super hot iron. Medium iron. And it does a great job. I got a little hotter. See how it's a little more sticky there? It's fine. It doesn't have to all come off. Because it will, if you did want to wash it, it will wash out. Okay, so you've got your nice, beautiful top. And you can make it into a quilt, into a pillow, into a bag, anything you want. Here we go. So now it's one of my favorite parts. We get to make the little tail. And um, elephant tails can range from a variety of material. Today I've got the twine that I just found in my studio. It was like at the back of my thread drawer and I'm pawing around back there. This is like a wool, you know, kind of coarse thing that I think is perfect for an elephant tail. You want to cut about 20 inches. Um, I will just double it. You know, it doesn't have to be exact, but I kind of double it and go to about, what, a little past my wrist. Cut a piece off. And you just hold the one end with your between your fingers with my left hand, and then I just start twisting it. And you twist, and you're twisting, and you're twisting. You don't want to get your fingers stuck, so make sure there's always a gap there. Twisting, twisting, twisting. Twisting, twisting. And you start to feel it coil up on itself. And that's when you put your finger in the middle, and you, get it, you roll it off your finger. Can you see what I'm doing? And then it just automatically twists back on itself. You see? Isn't that cute? So then I do just a simple little knot here. And you can make it shorter or longer. So this is, there's a little knot, which is the tip of his tail. And then, boop, cut that off. You fringe it a little bit. And there's your tail. So what you'll do after you're finished appliquing the elephant you just tack it down with a thread and needle. And then that's your little elephant. And this you can save for another day. So I'm all done. And I hope you've learned something about machine applique and the process in these three videos. Watch them all if you haven't. And I want you also to know that the whale and I is available in Ombre Quilts book. And the elephant and I is available at ctpub.com or your favorite quilt shop and give me a thumbs up if you learned something and like this video and you can follow us below in the link thanks for coming by and we'll see you next time